Okay, uh, we've got Rudy Pinkowski here, North Van. Uh, tell me, Rudy, how long have you lived in this house? Well, uh, we've been here 46 years. It was a brand new house. Uh, part of it was not even finished. And this was all sort of in a natural territory. Uh, we had a big ravine here. We had lots of big trees here. But some had to be taken out, obviously, uh, because they were too close to the house and too large. They were like 100 feet high. Uh, so my plan was always to have a house where I can use the outdoors as a living space as well. We got 3,000 square foot inside the home and there's at least another 3,000 outside the home. So I think um, it's a good idea to make it usable uh, so you can uh, make it part of your living space. So what elevation are you here? I'm with a 900 foot elevation. So um, you may have a little bit of a view, obviously. Uh, but at the same time, we get a little more rain here. We get a little colder temperatures in the winter time. But in spite of that, I decided on a Mediterranean style garden. I started about the mid 80s. And uh, that's when we formed the Palm so Pacific Northwest Palm and Exotic Plant Society. So we got into a new style of landscaping, which is well suited for, for outdoor living. And uh, some of these plants uh, have to be taken in the winter time, don't they? Uh, well, at one time we were not quite sure how hardy some of these plants are, but we have found enough palm trees that we can grow without worrying about uh, taking them inside. Um, the container plants, yes, they're going to be taken inside, but I had this house designed so if there's a place that we can easily move in uh, a few container plants but the rest is all in the ground. E even uh, when we uh, moved into this house, uh, we were just were sort of in the middle of the rhododendron craze. And everybody was buying rhododendrons and planting them uh, all over the place. And they're really beautiful garden plants. And I got into it very heavily. I finally counted them. I got uh, 64 rhododendrons in this garden. and, and uh, so, uh, but I, I fit them sort of to fit in with my new sort of subtropical Mediterranean look. Uh, what I do, I like to expose the trunks. Some have beautiful bark, even peeling bark. Uh, so they, they, uh, and they have uh, evergreen foliage and some have really glossy foliage and, and large foliage. Uh, so it's a beautiful companion plant. What about these palm trees here? Are people are kind of surprised that you can grow palms in, in Vancouver? and. Uh, how tall are those palms behind Well, you? they're over 20 feet now. Those I planted uh, over 40 years ago. Um, they're, they're, uh, eventually, they may reach a height. I've seen them as in Italy, for example, at 30 feet and so on. But, uh, yeah, they, since I planted them, a lot of them are in the 20-foot range. And they're totally hardy. I, I haven't lost any. This species is probably the hardiest of the uh, palm species. Um, often people ask, do they uh, you know, belong here? Will they survive here? Well, there are a lot of places we have gone to that have a lot of palms, but they're not native there. If you think you have been to France and Spain and uh, Greece, all those places, they have no native palms. They were introduced at one time exactly the same way what we are doing in Vancouver today. Mm. And the, even the California coastline, has no native palms. They have only one species native in California, but way inland in the de it's a desert palm. The coastline has no native palms. It's hard to imagine Los Angeles without any palm trees. So someday we will, uh, people will say the same thing about Vancouver. It's hard to um, imagine no palms in Vancouver. Now, uh, are these uh, just regular rotors? Are they species or? Well, th th this, is, uh, this, this one is a species here, yeah. Uh, that is uh, probably best suited for an uh, exotic garden because it is, hasn't got that bushy look to it. It has large foliage and the, a new growth coming out looks quite incredible. And it has that natural canopy effect. They don't even have to be shaped or pruned to fit in with sort of a Mediterranean look. And we got to remember, rotos are native to climates like ours and right into the tropics. Uh, so, uh, what about this one here that's uh, sort of got the unusual uh, top on it? What, what's, what's this one here? Or oh, this agave? 
This one here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's an agave. And that I move indoors in the winter time. But this is what the crown did look to when I moved it out, but we had this about three weeks ago, a real uh, cold spell there for, for about a week. And uh, so I know next time you wait a little bit longer to put it out. It's incredible foliage and, and uh, it's an attractive uh, plant. And uh, so, but it, that is certainly not hardy. And uh, whatever I have in containers, I have a place where I can move them in. I have a little dolly and just move it in. It's not a big deal. What about these, uh, this tall tree here? That, uh, when, if anybody ever asks me, what is your favorite plant? This is not the rhododendron, it's not the palm tree. It's the Polonia tomentosa. That spreads, has a very tropical road, have a long, horizontal, branching, flowering plant as well. But if you get temperatures colder than eight degrees, minus eight, then the flowers won't uh, blossom. The, the, but the tree is certainly hardy. I think it's native to, uh, I'm not quite sure, China or Central America. It has very large foliage that makes it look, but the tree itself is totally hardy, very large leaves, very tropical looking. And uh, so we got different sections going out. There's one going up, there's one going uh, south, and there's one going west that uh, developed a canopy right over the entrance to the house, all from one tree and the above ground roots. You see that a, a lot in, in warmer places as well, Mediterranean and so on. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I, my, it's my favorite tree. And then I Googled that tree. It says that it's the most hated tree. Um, and I says, what? Uh, I, to me, when people ask me, I always say, this is my favorite tree. It's because it has a big root system. Uh, when it drops leaves, it's a lot because the leaves are quite large and so on. But I, I don't mind living with that because it has a, 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 a I like an incredible structure and architecture. It's definitely one of the most architectural trees I have here in the garden. Okay, Rudy, you got quite a lot of uh, rock work here. Can you tell me who did all this rock work? Oh, well, I got pretty lucky. Uh, one of our members, well, he's a friend, uh, and uh, he did this kind of work in his younger years. He just turned 97 a couple of days ago. Uh, and uh, so he, uh, I was going to say he helped me, it was more I helped him. I was bringing all the rocks to him and all that. Uh, and uh, so how we had to use this area. This was a great big uh, hole full of weeds and all that, uh, like a big canyon. After you can probably maybe take a shot of the back there in the neighbor's yard. I paid for the land, I want, uh, I want to make it useful. And so now we got these terraces here and stairs down and all that. Uh, yeah, and planted, uh, you know, some exotic plants. See the palm trees here, uh, three in, in, in the, came in one container. Uh, was a 15-gallon um, uh, uh, container. And, the, you know, the trunk was only like maybe a foot and a half or so or two feet, but now they're way up there. And this is a baby of those palms. I plant, didn't plant this one in. It seeded itself here, and uh, so your garden keeps on growing without uh, doing a lot. Uh, I, I have the ferns which fit right in this. We have a high rain area, so I, I wanted the garden a little bit, not too much of a desert look, more of the sort of a tropical wet look. And uh, so that's uh, is the result. The ne this is a needle palm, and uh, it's a, quite a hardy palm. It's native to the southeastern U.S., uh, the Carolinas, and, uh, and down from there. Uh, but it's hardy for us here too. Uh, it's uh, not a very tall palm. It will probably go a trunk of maximum eight feet. And um, interesting, the needles are obviously uh, the sort of highlight of this plant. The foliage almost looks the same as the Trachycarpus fortuni, which is the most common plant we're growing in, in Vancouver here. Um, but the, the heavy trunk and the, the needles are very special. Rudy, you got a pond down here. Uh, does it have anything in it? Goldfish or anything? Yes, we got, we got goldfish. Uh, they're not that much work to look after. We got about, um, oh, roughly about 35, 36 fish in here. And uh, all you feed them twice a day, and that's all you have to do. 
Uh, this time of a year in May, there's always some kind of algae grown for about four to six weeks, and that batch, uh, even if you add uh, some solution to it that's supposed to control it, it really runs its cycle and then it tears up on its own again. I wanted a bit of a jungle look in here. As you see uh, behind me, these uh, big leaf plants. Uh, you got Ganera. They're, they're Ganeras. Uh, they will eventually be like five feet across uh, the, uh, each leaf, so this will look quite like a jungle. And I planted behind the banana trees, and they kind of uh, wandered slowly into these uh, uh, ganaras. So all of these, and their leaves are like like uh, even like six feet, seven feet on, on the palm. So this is a lot of big leaf uh, plants here, a lot of foliage here. It looks has really a, a very strong jungle effect, and um, so I love this. I like to sit down. It's relaxing. Like uh, palms are very uh, relaxing. Bananas are relaxing. Anything that has this beautiful foliage, and, um, and, and in fact, I always like to promote these are uh, being, or they should be classified as medical plants because they relax you. They do something to you. Okay. So what type of ferns, uh, those, those aren't the typical ones from around here, are they? Well, they may not, no, no not our native ferns. Uh, when I bought these so many years ago, I just bought them when I liked the looks of them, and I didn't even bother to find out what the name is and so on. There, there, there are probably a thousand different species of ferns around. you will probably not remember them all anyway. This one will go up to about the height of about five to six feet. Very, very impressive, very tropical looking. Um, well, uh, adding to this jungle look, I try to create in this area where the pond is, and uh, so I have uh, many four fer uh, ferns here. Even some uh, of the native ferns were absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I think you can see by the foliage how different uh, the foliage is in different ferns along the way. Also, ferns will scatter and spread themselves around. Like I have up the stairs, you see little ferns coming out. Did I plant them? No, I definitely did not plant them. They planted themselves there. If, the, if it's a wheat like that, I pull it out. If it's a fern, I leave it. It, it. it adds to the jungle look a little bit in this area here. I also have a waterfall here uh, um, that uh, um, has sort of plants on both sides, ferns included, other foliage plants. and uh, So it's kind of an area that is nice to come down here and just meditate for a while. And you've got a, a glass, uh, glass. Uh, is this a real fisherman's float? Uh, yeah, it's a real float? one. Yes, yes, yes. Some somebody gave it to me. Uh. And you got a you got a squirrel in your garden here too. Oh, we got oh lots of squirrels. I feed the squirrels. They they like uh, uh, peanuts. Pretty. I see a lot of very tender uh, plants here. Um, do you bring these out uh, during the uh, spring, or are they out here all the time? No, they, they, they go inside during the winter months. They, they're all agaves, and a lot of them are, uh, well, most of them are desert plants. They, uh, they don't like the rain, and they don't like cold temperatures. But um, they have very interesting architecture. They're, I would consider them architectural plants. Yeah, like um, this, this one here is kind of a spiral. That's yeah, I mean, the varieties is, is endless of these plants. And sometimes I throw in something else with them and, and so on. But um, also the reason I have it designed this way is this is a fairly big drop going down from here. And it had a retaining wall that was less than a foot high. And I thought people may just step backwards and fall over it. Yeah. So I had this ivy grow over it that makes it a lot bulkier now. And then I used these plants. So this will get attention. Nobody will walk into this. Yeah, and uh, you got some more over here. That yeah, well, this the whole. This is my desert garden now because it's a very sunny location, and um, it prevents people from kind of not noticing it. Uh, this is definitely be noticed by by everybody. Uh, the, the wall was just a, a bit of a danger that I thought that people could fall over. Look, here's my 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 pets. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, oh, they love. The tropical look, where, where did he go now? He's under the chair. Oh, yeah. See how tamed I've gotten? Because I feed him, you know. They, they really think I'm a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> so.
second. Okay. So uh, are these rotos here, uh, Rudy? That uh, yeah, I, I have uh, like a lot of rotos in this garden, and uh, I kind of uh, prune them a little bit. I never cut the tops off. I, I just take the lower branches off to uh, see the trunk and, and, and the bark. And so even the rotos that have actually feet and bark, very interesting. You want to see that. And they have then uh, uh, I take some of the little twiggy branches out as well, so you see the larger branches. They often have horizontal branching, and it forms like a canopy on top, naturally, and it has a very, very tropical look, fitting in with the rest of the garden. Okay, Rudy, what, what, what was this about the uh, Japanese tree? Well, there are some uh, plants we have grown for years and years, and uh, if you can develop uh, or find a plant that naturally has a canopy effect, that will f fit in with the Mediterranean-style garden. And this is a Japanese maple here. I love that foliage, beautiful light colored foliage. And it, I cut the lower branches off there. In fact, they most of them different than this to the open ones there. Eh? Yeah. But it's a really nice one there. Yeah, that's a nice plant. Uh, 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 is that a Wagnerianus? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Th th that one is one. And these two are. And this azaleas uh, do the same thing. I clean out the bottom, so you see the trunk formations. I, t I often take out little twiggy trunks as well on the bottom, right? So you don't have so many trunks. And uh, then you have the canopy. It naturally, I never trim the top. It just naturally forms into a canopy. Yeah. So what uh, plant is this, Rudy? Oh, this is a choice, yeah? Common name. I it is a Mexican mock orange. And has it's an evergreen, uh, beautiful uh, shiny foliage, uh, totally hardy. I never had any problem with it. But the scent is, is just breathtaking. It's this beautiful scent every every year, like uh, late spring, early summer. And uh, I have never pruned this or cut back because it, it kind of spreads sort of slowly all over the place. Uh, you know, from the main trunk, it, it goes underground and not a second. Uh, section comes up and uh, you can control them easily uh, they're not invasive to that point but they're so beautiful I like it spread out a little bit okay so we're in the shady area of the garden here uh, so Rudy how do you take uh, care uh, of this area and how, uh, what sort of plants do you put in here well I have rhododendrons in here but as you can see, a lot of the branches are taken out. You see uh, uh, the structure of the, of the plants. So light gets through a little bit more. I have a native cedar still here. I had to take a couple hemlocks out there. Where the one was very close to the house. I don't know why the builder was allowed to actually have it there. Uh, and another one, because I had a, a hemlock fall on my property uh, lower Lynn, when I lived in the, the lower part of Lynn Valley at one time. <laughs> Luckily it fell away from the house across our front yard, across the street, and across the uh, neighbor's front yard on the other side of the street. And it missed two cars by about a foot uh, or two feet on each side. So uh, I was a little scared of hemlock, so I took them out. But that is the cedar. But uh, a bit of a problem is the neighbor here, they're, they're, they're probably 20 big natural evergreens here so things um, need to be fertilized a little bit more it's a little sparse the landscape so i will work on this the plants in here that will uh, be able to cope with that uh, and i get hardly any sun here in this area too even shade plants do like to have a little bit of morning sun or afternoon sun a little bit uh, this area virtually gets no sun uh, so but it is still quite green i have a lot of rockeries in here as you can tell uh, a lot of ferns, uh, and um, uh, so uh, it's still a usable area, and then very hot days, I have a little bench, a tiny little patio here, so I can relax in the shade when it is uh, 30 degrees, just waiting for that now. But you see all the rotors here, they have, you see all the branches, so they're, they're not bushy, they're, there's still light coming through a little bit, as long as the late sun comes from the west, more or less, so they, it filters through here. And palms never give uh, give that much uh, shade. Uh, they they just given the, just enough for the plants that they get a uh, little protection, uh, but there's a lot of sun filtering through. Okay, so 
What have well, you got here? Well, here we got a lot of uh, uh, rhododendrons, azaleas here. That was planted uh, before we started the Palm Society, actually, you know. So, but they fit in. I, uh, you see, they all have bits sort of that canopy look. I take some branches out to make it sort of in, uh, uh, an, more or less an architectural plant as well. The, the flowers are really nice. This one is just coming out. That is a, that's on a rhododendron. It's already out in beautiful pink. And uh, I have bamboo in this area, and that's a clumping bamboo, uh, not spreading very quickly or not very uh, not far. And as you can uh, see, some of the plants I have here, like a fern. That I never planted a fern there. You know, just they know they belong here somehow. And uh, uh, I'm like you said before, in a more of a rainier area here. But um, I guess the. You know, I didn't plant those ferns either. They just plant themselves. They, they kind of realize we belong here. Hmm. And you've got some oh, tall bamboo. Bamboo, yeah. I, I, I keep it, uh, I prune it down on top, the height. I control the height. So it doesn't get too, because they can be quite messy. Uh, so I don't have a lot of foliage. And then fatsias are always... A uh, tropical looking plant or adding to the tropical look because of the large foliage. So, is this a different type of palm? No, or? it just doesn't grow. It's, it looks healthy, but it doesn't grow. The, you know, when I had it in the angle, I was going to pull it out of the box. It was a wooden box, which makes it more expensive because it's a bigger root system. Well, the thing fell out, it had no roots at all. So I thought, well, I paid for it. I must have taken it in the ground and see if it will grow. But it, it survived, but it never grew. But it's starting to kind of, it's been here for uh, like 15 years. But it's, <laughs> it was uh, maybe a foot less than what it is now, really. You know, it's weird. But so, so Rudy, you've got a tree fern here that's uh, a little ailing. Yeah, it, uh, something happened to it one year. Uh, I don't know if it was the cold or uh, it could have been... Uh, but I, I don't even know for sure. But it came back, but with very small foliage. And um, the new growth develops in the upper part of the trunk. So something happened in that area. It, it could have been the extreme cold. We live uh, fairly high up here. Uh, probably double digit frost. But it's coming back. Every year they get slightly little bigger. And then eventually it will be a, again back to five, six feet long fronds. So here we are in the front of your property. Uh, what have you got here, Rudy? Well, uh, I always, uh, first time I saw a monkey tree, I couldn't believe that's real. When I moved here from Edmonton, N none of those type of plants there. Anyway, so I planted one uh, almost as soon as we moved into this house, shortly after that. And uh, so it's been here for 46 years. And uh, if we're talking about architectural plants, that certainly is one. I saw them in South America. I even saw them as boulevard plants in, uh, in Chile. Uh, and uh, so that's one of the plants. The rest, when I planted, uh, or we moved in here, we planted a lot of rotors. So I have a lot of rotors in the front. Too. So there's flowers after flowers, then they're all flowering at the same time. We got azaleas here. And, um, uh, also, I like the but as an architectural plant is if you have an evergreen that you can shape sort of a little bit, get a bit of an artistic look to it. And I do this myself. So I, the reason I can do it myself because I used to be a hairdresser <laughs> and I'm used in shaping things. So, so <laughs> that's how they turn out almost like what they're supposed to. And uh, well, this is our neighbor's kitty here. <laughs> so. Uh, Tell me about your favorite rock here, Rudy. Well, this is my favorite rock. It looks like a giant jade. I have not ha had it determined if it is or not, but anyway, there's a subdivision about a kilometer from here, uh, about maybe 15 years ago. And uh, I saw a, 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 a backhoe moving this thing around in the, on the construction site. They were pushing some roads through there. and. Um, I stopped my car, went over, talked to the guy, you know, that is an awesome rock, I would like to have it. You think you can take it to, the, to my house? I'm only no more than a kilometer from here. He said, uh, I don't mind paying for it. 
Uh, uh, how much would you charge me if you uh, if you could take it to my house? Um, um, $70? Okay, I says, you got it. And he, he, yeah, he brought it right here uh, with his backhoe and I told him where to put it and that's where he put it. It's a, just an awesome color on this, uh, on this rock. And so I'm trying to find now enough blue rocks that I can place with it. Eventually I can keep this whole area just with blue rocks, blue or green rocks. And uh, it's just something that uh, I get into and uh, that's part of gardening is that it's such a di diverse hobby. You can go in so many different directions in style or plant species or rocks. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's just an amazing hobby. If you're a golfer, well, you know you got to put that ball into that hole. That's, that's what you do every time. But in gardening, you can go in so many different directions. It's almost too, uh, impossible to explain it all.